Hello, in our two-part video series, we will be discussing telemedicine and remote patient care. In part one, we will start with the basics. First, what is telemedicine and how does it work? Second, what are the types of telemedicine and what are its benefits? Finally, how is telemedicine used today and what are its disadvantages? Stay tuned. What is telemedicine? Telemedicine can be defined as the use of technology, computers, video, phone, and messaging by medical professionals to diagnose and treat patients in a remote location. Modern technology has enabled doctors to consult patients by using HIPAA compliant video conferencing tools. Depending on what your doctor offers, you can get medical services in different ways. Two of the most common are 1. A patient portal with the security of a username and password. A patient portal lets you send or get emails from your doctor or nurse to ask for prescription refills and set up appointments. Your doctor can also share your lab or imaging test results and tell you what they mean. This is often faster than waiting to talk to them on the phone. 2. Virtual Appointments Some doctors can let you have an appointment through a phone call or video conference. You can often have these meetings with health professionals and urgent care clinics as well. What are the types of telemedicine services? Did you know there are different types of telemedicine? That's right. There are a few different ways that healthcare system can use telemedicine to assist patients. Some of them are interactive medicine, also known as live telemedicines, allows patients and physicians to communicate in real time. Communication methods include both phone consultations and video conferences. Physicians can assess patient medical history, perform psychiatric evaluations and more using interactive medicine. Store and forward. This type of telemedicine allows providers to share patient information with a practitioner in another location. For example, a primary care physician can now share patient records and medical data with a specialist without being in the same room. Systems can transmit information across bad systems and different systems so one physician can know what another has already done. This leads to less duplicate testing and fewer instances of pure medication management. Remote patient monitoring permits providers to monitor their patients in their own homes. Using patient portals, a physician can gather and share information with the patient. Besides, medical devices can send vital signs and more to providers so they can adjust the care as needed. Benefits of telemedicine Advanced healthcare system facilities are using technologies that come integrated with telemedicine. Software like electronic medical records, AI diagnosis and medical streaming devices to assist provider in diagnosis and treatment. Providers can also benefit from increased revenue. By utilizing medicine, physicians can see more patients without the need to hire more staff or increase office space. Also, patients can enjoy less time away from work, no travel expenses or time, privacy, and no exposure to other potentially contagious patients. Thanks to telemedicine, patients who once could not see a physician due to access to care issues can now do so almost seamlessly. Here are a few examples of how it is used today. With high-tech medical devices, physicians can now monitor their patients' health over long distances. Touchscreen technology allows providers to access heart rate, blood pressure, glucose levels and more through the transmission of data from one device to another. Providers and other healthcare professionals can use telemedicine technology to monitor when and if their patients took their medicine. As a result, this leads to fewer hospital readmissions and enhances medication compliance. The emergency room is one of the most expensive, overcrowded and stressful environments in healthcare. With telemedicine, overcrowded emergency rooms can be reduced by having patients see a remote physician using video chat first.
the remote physician can determine if that individual should seek care in an emergency department, which increases ED efficiency. When a disaster occurs, the local healthcare resources are immediately pulled in to provide both emergent and non-emergent care. This usually results in a shortage as the demand for services is much higher than what can be supplied. With telemedicine, physicians in other locations can provide assistance by conducting video visits. Although telemedicine has many benefits, there are some downsides to it as well. Providers, payers, and policymakers alike know that there are some great areas that are difficult to keep up with. While the field will grow exponentially over the next decade, it will bring with it both practical and technological challenges. Because technology is growing at such a fast pace, it's been difficult for policymakers to keep up with the industry. There is great uncertainty regarding matters like reimbursement policies, privacy protection, and healthcare laws. Several physicians and patients are finding it difficult to adapt to telemedicine, especially older adults. Physicians are very concerned about patient mismanagement. There is also the potential for error as technology cannot always capture what the human touch can. Telemedicine solutions require a lot of time and money. Implementing a new system requires training and sometimes staff members find it difficult to welcome this change. Practice managers, nurses, physicians, and more have to learn how to utilize the system so that they can see the benefits. This concludes part one of this video series. In part two, we will look at how COVID-19 has increased the demand for these services and how they have been implemented in Nicaragua, which is a developing country. Keep watching. COVID-19 telemedicine is a scalable solution for virus control management. Some companies even offer a cloud-based patient monitoring platform with clinical assessment protocols for COVID-19, allowing nurses and doctors to screen and monitor patients while keeping them at home. These applications hereby help healthcare officials and authorities to increase capability or capacity by reducing the spread and by optimizing their spare resources. The patient accesses the screening and monitoring program through an app through which he can also chat with a nurse. The web portal is the nurse's only access to the patients. The protocols are fully automated. If a patient has COVID-19 symptoms during screening process, he auto-enrolls into the monitoring programs as the nurse only interferes on red alerts like when symptom peak is registered. She can process a large number of patients in a very short time. This way, the bottleneck is reduced on call centers and load on healthcare professionals included the risk of getting infected. COVID-19 telemedicine provides multiple benefits for the citizens and helps healthcare authorities to improve capacity and hereby avoiding system collapse. Nicaragua is a country located in Latin America where the expansion of the COVID-19 is increasing every week. On mid-June 2020, there was almost 6,000 cases of COVID-19 and almost 1,700 deaths, of which 72 were of healthcare provider staff. The emergency care services at hospital had already reached its full capacity. Despite being in delicate physical conditions, patients are asked to seek care at a different hospital because there wasn't any room available. After waiting several hours for the result of the test, the doctor confirmed the diagnosis and patients are sent home to self-isolate and take palliative care medication. Nicaragua's epidemiological top priorities are maternal health-related issues and acute respiratory illness like pneumonia. The most relevant issues in the healthcare systems are geographical access, 
The central and east region are vast, rural, and impoverished areas that lack basic services, including roads and high transportation costs. It takes days to reach the nearest hospital, all of them located in the west region. Health information systems. There is a long lag time for the transmission of information for returning diagnostic results to patients and healthcare providers. The whole process to get the positive result to a patient can take up to three months, especially in rural areas. So, how does telemedicine could help to overcome these challenges? Telemedicine can be a cost-effective way to bridge the healthcare gap between rural and urban Nicaragua. In 2003, the private Integral Health Hospital was the scene of the first demonstration of telemedicine in the country. Using telemedicine, four patients were treated in consultations with specialists in France who shared their opinions with local doctors on how to treat the patients. The exercise was carried out using satellite telephone system and audiovisual equipment. This event demonstrated the feasibility of remote medical treatment and other doctors expressed interest in adopting it. Over the following years, telemedicine proved to be particularly useful in areas that were isolated or in emergency situations. Therefore, in 2012, the government of Nicaragua partnered with Russia for telemedicine development and knowledge sharing. Russian doctors consulted and exchanged information with local doctors to diagnose and issue medical treatments. By February 2017, 81 medical centers in the country were using telemedicine to provide teleconsultation, telecare, and teleeducation for medical personnel. Later that year, in October, the Ministry of Health held the first International Congress of Telemedicine. During the Congress, invited specialists from different countries such as Argentina, Guatemala, and Chile shared their experiences with Nicaragua. At that time, there were 290 health units interconnected nationwide with 90 video conference rooms where doctors and nurses could have virtual consultations with different specialists across the region. Thus far, telemedicine has managed to remotely serve thousands of patients in rural areas of Nicaragua, and since the emergence of COVID-19, this number has more than doubled. In fact, in response to this pandemic, one of the national healthcare protocols was to organize a group of experts to plan and implement critical patient management using telemedicine technologies. Another telemedicine solution that emerged in 2020 was the creation of DocDoc, -Doc, a mobile application which connects people with health professionals who make online consultations 24 hours a day. To date, this application, which is available in the App Store and Play Store, has served more than 7,000 patients. Additionally, in recent days, it has increased its operation by 300% throughout the country. To put things into perspective, let's consider this scenario. Maria has been experiencing some pain and fears that there may be complications with her pregnancy. She lives in Bilwi, which is about eight hours and a half drive from the capital, Managua. Previously, she would have needed to travel to the capital to get an ultrasound. Thanks to the introduction of telemedicine at her local clinic, she does not need to make this long journey for diagnosis. Instead, Maria visits the clinic where medical personnel perform the ultrasound. The image is sent electronically to a specialist in Managua. The medical personnel take her to the teleconference room and the specialist joins the call. He analyzes the ultrasound results, records and discusses the diagnosis, and sends back a report indicating the problem and measures that should be taken to resolve it. Finally, the center issues the necessary care and medication and Maria is able to return home with peace of mind. As you may have already imagined, on its own, telemedicine cannot replace all physical doctor's care. Some illnesses cannot be completely treated remotely, and physical facilities and trained medical personnel are required. However, it is evident that telemedicine is indeed a viable solution for providing healthcare to the underserved, especially in rural areas with very few hospitals and little or no physical access to specialists. 
We've now concluded part two of our video series. We certainly hope you've learned a lot and we wish you all the best in your endeavors. Thank you.